Hey guys, it's Troy here, and I wanted to share with you a pen that I just recently acquired. Uh, and it's one that I was looking for. Believe it or not, this was not the one I was looking for. But it was at the same time. What do I mean by that? I've been wanting a Wall Eversharp Deco Band. And I literally have on my wish list that I keep on my computer... Um, on there is a Wall Eversharp Deco Band. To me, they're absolutely gorgeous. The new incarnations, I'm talking the modern pens. Big, chunky, fat, gorgeous pens uh, with gold nibs on them, and uh, they tend to be super flex nibs. And that's the only part I didn't like about them is that they're super flex nibs. And I don't necessarily want a flexy nib on stuff. Um, but, as you might know, I also like vintage pens. I love vintage just as much, if not more, than modern pens. And yes, I do a lot of vintage here on my channel, and this is no exception. Just recently I went to the 2021 Triangle Pen Show, uh, which just happened this past weekend. And while I was there, I was looking at the brand new Wall Eversharp Deco Bands, along with a bunch of others. Uh, and I just was drooling over them, and the prices were just a little higher than I wanted to pay. Um, at least for just, for just one pen. Don't get me wrong, I spent the amount of money and then some uh, for what they cost, but I only would have gotten one pen that whole trip. So I kept looking around the pen show and I ran across this that one guy had. And uh, I said, ooh, you got a nice little deco band, a uh, nice vintage deco band. I have not cleaned it up or polished it up. It, it looks exactly like it did when I got it. The only thing I did do to it was ink it up and try it out. And I've been using it. I've written some letters with it already and I've been playing with it and it was my pen of the day yesterday um, and another pen that I got uh, by the same company by the way was my pen of the day today. So I um, wanted to show you this particular pen. Um, now this pen I would place around 1930 or so. Um, 1929 somewhere in there. Um, the Illustrated Guide to R Antique Writing Instruments by Stuart Schneider and George Fischler. So, um, in this particular book, I'm going to show you what I've got here. So, this should look mighty familiar, exactly like what I've got sitting here. So, it's a 1930 Wall Eversharp Oversized Gold Seal Personal Point Deco Band Pen in Pencil cream and black, gold-filled trim. Uh, and at the time of this publication, apparently these book, these uh, uh, were worth somewhere between 460 and 500 in a set in mint condition. Well, this is not a set, and it's not exactly mint con condition, but it's actually in very good condition. So, deco band. It describes that. It describes the decorative band that is on it. And, um, you know, it is a wall ever sharp, but it is also gold seal. I've got some up close pictures that if it doesn't show very well here on the camera, then I'll go ahead and actually show you. But you've got a nice gold seal right here. And on the top, on the finial, it's pretty much just a flat black disc. And you've got a very common clip. That, that clip being halfway down, uh, well, I, I would not, maybe not halfway, but two thirds of the, uh, the third of the way down, maybe, uh, on that cap is very typical of Wall Eversharp during that time period that I keep running across on, especially on old deco bands. And then you look at uh, the clip there, uh, not the greatest light, even though it's a great bright light here that I've got. I'm not a fan of how that's showing up on camera, but you got a gorgeous deco band here that goes around and around that cap and then it, you got it uh, basically it's a it's a cigar shape or you know uh, a tube torpedo type shape well it's not really a tapered torpedo but you know there's a little chip out of it right here out of that celluloid you got a lever here um, as you would expect during that time period and you've got another gold band here and another black disc down the end now I call these flat tops it's, it's a rather generic term, but I do like flat tops. And that was very popular during that time period. And i got to be honest with you, I love the flat top look in a pen. Um, there are certain looks that I love in fountain pens. The flat top is one of them. As a matter of fact, I will show you some here in my collection to give you an idea. Um, this is kind of like deja vu. You've already seen something like this already. 
This is from Schaefer. It is a flat top. It is a, an old antique lever filler. And you've got the flat at the top, flat at the bottom. And you've got the same kind of like pearl in ebony or pearl in black. And one of the things you can see, it's, it's not perfect on either one of these. You can see there's a little bit of discoloration, like on this one, uh, on the Schaefer. You see how nice and white it is and how it's kind of yellowish down below. Um, my understanding is that comes from uh, maybe some uh, fumes from the, uh, the sack that is uh, in the pen. Um, so typically you have on the barrel more discoloration than you do at the, on the cap. Uh, but you can see I do have a little bit of discoloration here. Uh, and that doesn't bother me, by the way. Uh, it, when, when you're looking at something that is, what, 70, 90 years old, 91 years old, I wish I looked that good at 91, you know what I'm saying? If I made it that age at all. So let's throw in a couple of more. Um, you know, when you start looking at, like, a Parker, like a dual fold, uh, you know, I, I do like the dual fold. And it's got the same general shape. Throw in, let's say, another, uh, I'm a sucker for jade celluloids as well. I'm not much on green, but I do have a couple of jade celluloids that are more of a flat top style. Uh, one of these is a Belmont, and one of them is uh, an actual Schaefer. Speaking of Schaefer, Schaefer really like to go with, you know, that same color pattern. You know, this color really grew on me. I was not a fan of um, at all uh, of the white or the pearl uh, in the black but the more I got pens that were that way the more it kind of grew on me uh, you know another smaller much smaller Schaefer flat top and you can tell a very discolored pearl and black um, and then an, an antique another old wall ever sharp right here which uh, it, you know is a ring top so just like uh, this one was meant to be a ring top uh, where we'd actually have a ring on it that you could put on a lanyard um, or on a keychain if you had to that kind of thing all right so just to um, cap it out for you people who are wondering about size comparisons the ubiquitous modern pilot metropolitan so if you wanted to see what it looks like um, by comparison there you go. So let me take these out of the way and we'll show you more on that Wall Eversharp deco band. Now the 1930 version was considered to be oversized. Uh, it is definitely bigger than the, the pens that were typical of the time period, even though by today's standards this is not considered to be oversized. Uh, this would probably be considered to be normal size for most people. Um, but I do like the size. It's very comfortable and and they're oversized to me. It's just about the perfect size and I do like even the modern version which is a lot bigger than this, chunkier than this, a little longer than this, um, which is one of the reasons why I still kind of wanted one. Um, I just wasn't prepared to pay that kind of price when I got this. Uh, at least I got to see them, touch them, feel them, and be tempted by them at the Raleigh show. But as I walked around and saw this for far, far less, I mean hundreds, uh, hundreds less, I went ahead and picked this one up. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way. So the Gold Seal Deco Band. It is a screw top. It doesn't take very much to unscrew it. One and a quarter, one and a half turns or so. You pull it apart and you've got that beautiful celluloid uh, inside. You've got that inner cap seal right there. And like I said, I have not cleaned this pen up. This is exactly the way it was when I got it. Of course, like I said, I've inked it up and I may actually have some ink uh, that's down in and around there. You can see, actually, even after I've wiped up this particular nib uh, before I started this video, so this is actually uh, pretty good at staying good and wet, and I may actually have to clean out that cap of some of the uh, the ink. Um, but you've got your screw threads here. you get got a nice, good size section there. And in my big paws, this actually feels very, very good in my hand. So I'm liking it. I love how this fits. I was able to sit and write a letter with it and it felt great in my hand. 
um, on the particular paper that I had. I didn't like how it wrote on that particular paper because that paper that I was using um, tends to be a little toothy and I'll eventually uh, do um, a, probably an, a full review of that particular paper. Uh, it's uh, actually it was Ayush, which is um, uh, an Indian uh, made paper. But um, I mean, but this has got a nice 14 karat gold nib. I'll show you a better picture of that as well. Obviously, it's a lever filler, and you have a sack in here. There's not anything really here for an imprint on it at all. So I don't believe there was meant to be an imprint on this particular pen either. So I was looking for it to see if there was one. Nope, didn't see it uh, in this celluloid at all. But that's fine. Uh, that's one of the things that you know you recognize it. It has the gold seal. You got the Wall Ever Sharp logo right there into that seal. paper so I can show you how an antique pen or vintage pen from 1930 will perform. This wall ever sharp. This is a gold seal deco band. Circa 1930 and it's got a great gold nib on it. You can hear just a little bit of feedback on it as I'm writing, and that, that's that's normal. Uh, it's it's very very normal, but it's still a very smooth nib. It, I mean, it's it's not the smoothest. It's not the most perfect nib I've written with, and I'll bet you I can make this buttery smooth with just a few moments of micro mesh. Um, but this is a uh, you know this is a fine. To medium, it's actually probably on the medium side of fine, or on the fine side of medium, depending upon how you would want to look at it. But you do have some flex to it. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a little bit of flex, and you can get some good line variation out of it if you wanted to. It's not a wet noodle, and I was I would not want it to be, but it does lay a good amount of ink down when you go to write with it. These are still wet right here, watch. It does pretty good, doggone good. Like I said, this was my pen of the day just yesterday. And I have been writing with it an awful lot. What did I put into this uh, pen? Well, I put into some my old reliable Waterman Black. Not only because it's a vintage pen, and some people, you know, prefer that, but because I wanted black ink. And Waterman Black is actually my go-to ink. I'm just doodling. <laughs> but this is a fun pen. And it's a beautiful vintage. I like good vintage pens. I like pens with a history on them. And I like to see how people wrote back in 1930. I, I could just imagine the history of somebody sitting down and taking this pen and, let's say, um, you know, writing a letter, filling out a form. Um, who knows what, what this pen had written over the years. Was it owned by a writer? Was it owned by a doctor? Was it an ordinary housewife or um, you know, an attorney? I have no idea. Haven't got a clue. And maybe what I'll do is, uh, after I clean it up, uh, going through my first filling, I'll go ahead and polish it up. And, but I didn't want to polish it when I first got it. I wanted to try it right out of my pocket or right out of my, you know, my... Uh, carry pack 
uh, that I took it out of. And I wanted to go ahead and ink it up and see how it would do. Now, the guy I bought it from said that he did put on a new sack on it and, and had done uh, at least make it made it functional. But I can see where it could still use a good polish uh, here and on the band and maybe a, a good polish here on the clip. And that would make that baby shine up even more than it does. And uh, maybe some polish all along. And, you know, every, I, do, I do see some scuffs. I mean, I, I, I see what looks like to... Uh, here I can't tell if that uh, that's really a, a scuff or if that's part of the pattern um, of that celluloid. But I'm very, very happy with this. I paid a whole lot less than I would for a modern one. I'm into vintage pens. I'm still in the market for a modern one when I decide that I want to let loose of that kind of money. Uh, but I was glad to add something that I've had my eye on for a while because I've seen these out and about. wasn't my first choice of color, but I, I like I said, the more I see the pearl and black, the more that color tends to grow on me. I did like the size. I liked the fact that it was um, you know, uh, 1930s to me. Uh, when you're dealing with a pen like Wall Eversharp, uh, definitely within like the top four, top five manufacturers of its day. Uh, so I just absolutely did not want to pass this up uh, for the price that this uh, this seller offered it to me. I went ahead and said, fine, sold. Whipped out the cash, uh, and here I've got a nice little piece of history here in my hands.